and welcome to this video. Um, it's my first one that I have put together since I had our little Bean, which is now Baby, who is tucked away in this sling. This is little Elsie. I don't know whether you can see her very well, but she's having um, a well, much needed nap, should I say, um, in this new godsend, which is a sling. Um, it's given me the opportunity to actually gain a little bit um, of me back um, every day so I'm able to do a little bit of blogging today vlogging so I'm really pleased this is a very good investment um, I know some people don't really agree with the sling but hey um, it got to 10 weeks and I was starting to lose my mind a little bit and so um, I'll have to just pay for, for her therapist in a few years if this is going to cause too much of a problem but you don't see many people carrying 15 year olds in a sling so I'm hoping it doesn't impact too much on um, the way she's going to be in the future so we'll see but for now it's given me a bit of my sanity back so I cannot complain and I'm loving the sling anyway uh, today's video um, is something that I've thought about doing since two three days after we brought Elsie home and that is related to breastfeeding um, I know it's a little bit of a taboo subject um, you you know there is just so many um, expectations for mums to breastfeed and then there's a real negativity around if you're bottle feeding and then also in the press you know lately there's been this whole breastfeeding in public you know debate so there's been a lot going on since um, I've been pregnant which uh, made didn't really help my decision in any way. I didn't listen to any of that. I'm the one who decided that I wanted to breastfeed my baby if I could. Um, so I didn't really listen to too much of the negativities and the pros and cons with breastfeeding and formula and all that jazz. You know, it was me that made the, the decision to want to do it just for the way I felt in my body. Um, not I'm not here to sit and say it's best for baby, it's best for mum. You know, I think there are pros and cons to everything. And there have been many a time I've wanted to quit breastfeeding feeding and take up formula feeding because um, it's not easy it really isn't I don't think either aspect is an easy decision you, you make um, whatever you decide to do I've learned very quickly with babies you know you're left feeling guilty one way or another um, but I just wanted to do this video because I do believe there's a lot of help out there for breast um, for women to breastfeed their newborn babies but I think there's a lot that's unsaid and if it wasn't from the help of a couple of my close friends I think I would have given up breastfeeding on day the day my milk came in basically um, so I just thought I'd put together this little video on just my top tips for um, breastfeeding a newborn so whether you're deciding to try breastfeeding you're determined to breastfeed if you want to breastfeed for a couple of years a few months or just a couple of weeks whatever you know these are the tips that I've got just to get you through that first couple of weeks um, which I think were the toughest in terms of establishing breastfeeding and also just get into grips with you, how your body works, you know, their needs, you know, it's a really emotionally draining and demanding um, time and I just think a lot of people want to do it and I can see why people give it up. Now I'm not here to preach, I've already said that, but it's just for anybody out there that's like me that really wants to give it a go. So I just thought I'd share my top tips on breastfeeding a newborn. My first tip is to really look at what classes and courses are available in your area. I went to a brilliant breastfeeding course um, a couple of weeks before baby was due. I think only about two weeks before baby was due. Um, and they gave you a few tips. And again, these things I don't think stick in your mind until the baby comes. That's when you need to know it. None of those really, I mean, you get this whole nose to nipple thing, but that's about it. I mean, it's always good to do a refresher. But the one thing that really helped me out was um, the idea of colostrum harvesting. Now, I had to do that, or I was advised to do that in terms of the gestational diabetes. And I was told that if I could harvest some of my colostrum, if baby was having trouble latching on when she was born and her blood sugar levels were really low, then we could just whip out these um, little syringes, which I'll show you. They're just these tiny little syringes. Um, they come in like one mils and two and a half mils or three mils. Um, but you basically hand learn how to hand express, which is what I think is really key in terms of breastfeeding. You really get to know your boobs in a really weird way but get to know how the milk comes out and the motions and just you know it just gives you another tool that gives you 
um, just another way of trying to produce the milk and seeing how the milk comes out for baby because um, in those first few days you never know you might have to hand express if your milk's coming in with a vengeance like mine so i thought the colostrum harvesting was a really good idea it was also really good to do if you never know your baby might be born a few weeks early or there might be some complications when baby's born or there might be something up with you so if you're keen to breastfeed having a stock of colostrum which is the thing you you know the stuff that your boobs first produce before the milk comes in it's like a sticky gluey type substance um, it's quite hard to do at first I went to a couple of classes but after that I got the swing of it and I was producing up to one or two meals a day hand expressing the colostrum into these tubes so that I knew I had a little supply for when baby arrived if there was any complications we could give them to her but there's another reason these came in handy which I'll go into a little bit later but I think my first tip before baby comes is get to know your boobs, take up any classes that are out there and you know get to know, even if you're not going to use the colostrum, it's a really good way of learning the hand expressing technique whilst you've got the time because once baby arrives, you know, your mind is all over the place. So if you've got that skill under your belt, then it's one less thing to sort of worry about once baby arrives. My next tip is to try and be as prepared as possible. Now this is the one thing that I thought I was before baby arrived, but clearly I wasn't. Um, we had Elsie on the Wednesday and then my milk came in with a vengeance on the Saturday night, so around about four days after she was born. Um, before then, she'd been latching on absolutely fine, taking the colostrum um, from my boobs. I didn't have to use these. I only used a couple of my field colostrum syringes when she was first born just because they were there and just to use them whilst I was in hospital that was absolutely fine I didn't want them to go to waste because I'd worked quite hard to get them um, but my milk came in with an absolute vengeance and I think this is my main reason for wanting to do the videos because I was so unprepared for how I would feel and for how we would deal with that when the milk did come in um, I think Elsie had her last feed about half past eight at night we both had a little nap and I woke up and I'm not even joking, I just had these absolute mountains of boobs. There was nothing I could do, there was no definition or separation between the nipple and the breast. It was just two absolute melons. And because of that, there was absolutely no way she could latch on. There was nothing for her to latch on because my breast was so swollen. So um, we spent the next 12 hours in utter chaos trying to get baby to feed something. Now this is the point I think, and this is the moment I think people then go to formula because it's the easiest option. Because you've got a newborn baby that is screaming for a feed and you can't do anything to, or you feel like you can't do anything to feed them, but you can. And this is where I don't want to sound like I'm preaching, but this is, you know, what we did. You know, I ended up hand expressing milk into her mouth because there was no way she could latch on at all because, the, you know, the nipple just wasn't there. So I was hand expressing into her mouth. I was hand expressing my milk into these syringes. So it's always good if you are going to take up this option to ask for extra supplies at the hospital. Hopefully they'll be as generous as our hospital was. So I was hand expressing milk into these little syringes. Again, a skill that I perfected weeks before she arrived so that I knew she was getting my milk and I knew that, you know, she was getting one meal at a time. And even though it didn't calm her, it didn't settle her, I just knew that she was getting the milk that she needed. So again, so being prepared before really helped with this. Um, a, of course this only lasted so long and there were only so many syringes and so much we could do so we ended up calling the midwife and the midwife said you know you need to get into a shower try and express some of the excess milk in the shower um, hop compresses you know to just try and take the swelling down try and massage um, just to try and get the milk flowing you know all of that advice which you can get on the internet but for me the only release came about six o'clock in the morning where I was standing in the doorway of our kitchen, Elsie screaming in my arms, milk dripping everywhere because I'd been in the shower, I was just standing there in my pants. There's nothing glamorous about having a baby. Um, anybody who's had a baby knows that. Um, and my husband was standing in the kitchen, bless him, with two instruction books, one for the uh, my um, my 
breast pump and the other one for the steriliser and he was literally just didn't know which one to read first which one to set up first and you know and there was both of us these girls crying um you know just in an absolute state because we didn't know what to do didn't know who to sort out first it was just absolute chaos and this is the reason i just thought this video would be quite good because i think it's really key to if you've got that time before baby comes to set up the steriliser to get a few bottles clean and to get to know how your um breast pump works as well just to save you that time so that if you have tried all the you know the options that the midwife say then another option is to express some of that excess milk and give baby a bottle from that now of course that goes against what most midwives are saying I'll probably get in trouble for saying that but at the end of the day if your baby's getting fed and it's she's still he or she's still getting the breast milk then I think that's the best that you can do so that's what we ended up doing we ended up expressing some of my excess milk and feeding her from a bottle and poor baby I mean she drank three ounces in next to nothing she was so thirsty by this point so I knew that we'd done the right thing by getting out the breast pump expressing and getting on to that in terms of breast pumps I've been using the, the Medela I can never say it I've been calling it Mandela but um, the Medela um, swing breast pump which my sister-in-law kindly bought for me as a gift so thank you for that um, I think this is amazing really easy to use and I I haven't had any pain from it so um, I did try the hand pump when my milk first came in and it felt like I, I don't know some sort of torture device I felt like my nipples were being ripped off by a goat and um, it was just awful I couldn't use it and I think there's that motion about you doing the pain as well it's like self-inflicted pain why are you gonna do it you're not so but the electric breast pumps I found don't hurt at all um, and that one seems to work really really well and I've got into a good swing of things using that one another Another good thing to have um, before baby arrives is some sort of nipple cream as well. I've been using this Lanz Lanzanoa. I don't know. I can't read it. I can read, but I can't pronounce things very well. But anyway, this nipple cream. I don't know if you can see it there. Mm. Anyway, this I find is amazing stuff. Another thing um, that I ended up using were some nipple shields. Now again, these can be used if you're finding breastfeeding quite tough anyway, because, um, you know, baby's latching on really hard, you know, you're, you've got extra sensitive nipples, I don't know, but I think people generally use these, you know, just to take off, just to take that sting away, just for a little bit, just to give you a little bit of a respite from the pain. Um, but I found that once Elsie had taken to the express milk, um, which was all well and good, um, she wouldn't latch back on to the boob very easily. We really, really struggled. Um, the nurse, the midwife said that, again, this is because she's got used to the bottle so soon, but at the time, we weren't left with any other choice. You know, she wasn't, I, she wasn't latching on because I had too much milk, and then once my breast went down, she was used to the bottle. So it's one of those situations. And by expressing and giving her a bottle, given her a bottle then express it and by the time you'd worked out a routine um, it was just you know double the work you know I wasn't getting anywhere because every time we'd feed her an express bottle I'd have to pump again so that was turning into a bit of a nightmare so I knew that we had to wean her off the bottles quite quickly and one midwife suggested getting these nipple shields and again these are the Medela ones Medela you know what I mean um, I kept calling them gum shields but they're not they're breast shields and I found these really worked quite well because Elsie was under the impression that she was still having a bottle, but it really encouraged her to, you know, start the whole breastfeeding, sucking, latching on process again. So these really, really worked for me. I think these were about eight pounds and I did have, um, you know, some Boots Own Brown ones and then the Avent ones, but I found that, um, Event or Advent, I don't know, there are so many names, so many stuff, and I've got so much baby brain going on, it's not even funny. But I found that these were the best ones for us, and I got a couple of pairs of these. Again, you can stick these in the steriliser as well, so just rotate these. A little bit fiddly as well, so make sure you've got a muslin with you, because sometimes baby will store up a bit of milk in these shields and then fall asleep, and then the milk goes everywhere, so it's always good to have that handy just to mop that up. But we use these, we are now in our second week, Elsie's 10 weeks, and we were using these up until she was about seven or eight weeks. So it did take quite a few weeks to wean her off these. I'd always put her on the breast first without these. 
if we'd faff and she'd or she'd faff and she wouldn't get on and she'd get into a state then I knew it was time to just pop these on and just go with it then but I did, it was just consistent with trying her back on the breast and eventually we did get there so we're on our second week without these but I have to say these were a godsend and if it wasn't for these I probably still wouldn't be breastfeeding and we'd be back and we'd not be back we'd be on the formula um because I don't know how else we would have got around it my next bit of advice is to don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I never came across a bad midwife. I know everybody else's experiences are different, but just ask for help. And just and also not necessarily take their advice um, as golden. You know, so if one says one and one says another, then go with your gut instinct on what they say. Because at the end of the day, everybody's different and every baby's different. So don't be afraid to ask for their advice, try it, if it doesn't work for you, ask somebody else. And just always go with what your gut's telling you to do because at the end of the day, it's most important that your baby gets fed. And if it means breastfeeding or bottle feeding, however you go about that decision and making that decision together, then you know, you know it's the right decision that you've made for your personal reasons and for the benefit of your baby. My last bit of advice is to just really just try and focus on you and the baby and that's probably the bit of advice that I didn't take and it's taken me a long while to you know to really think about because I actually thought that life should just crack on as it was and baby would just have to slot into how we were and that's just really not the case. I assumed that I would pick up breastfeeding just naturally I assumed I'd find it easy but it's not breastfeeding is really really hard and I still um, am quite surprised at how hard I'm still finding it every single day um, yeah she's latching on yeah she's getting the milk that she needs and yep she's growing and putting on the weight um, in her you know in her percentile absolutely fine which is all great so I know we're doing something right but the breastfeeding itself takes a real sort of strain on mum you know especially when you're feeding on request and you have no sort of routine in place you don't know how much she's getting for how long and they do become a little bit extra clingy because they end up using you as a human dummy as well in some cases well in our case um so i have found the whole process really really hard and probably the toughest part of this has been breastfeeding for me. One day I decide that this is gonna be it, we're gonna wean off the breastfeeding, and other days I think we're doing really well. So I'm just taking every day as it comes. Um, I'm not putting a proper you know, deadline on this because I feel like we've come so far that I really sort of wanna just crack on for as long as we can. So I thought I'd just put this video out there as my first video since having Elsie, as I found this the most important part of trying to get your head together with a newborn and just trying to enjoy the experience because breastfeeding is lovely as bottle feeding is you know you're feeding your child and you're giving them what they need to just grow and develop and you're seeing them change every day and because of those changes it's however you're feeding them you know it's because of the milk they're getting from whatever source that they're growing they're changing they're developing and they're becoming these tiny little people that you've been carrying around for so long. So it is a wonderful experience, however you're feeding your child. Um, let me know in the comments box below if you've got any other questions. I'm no expert, um, but it's just nice to chat to people that are in a similar boat to you, or who are about to embark on a similar journey to you. Um, it's always good to sort of share some tips and advice, and um, yeah, good luck. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. I don't know when that will be, who knows, um, but hopefully it won't be too long. Thanks very much. Bye.